Hey friends, hello, hello, hello. Um, happy Monday. Can I just say, thank the Lord for alarm clocks because I almost slept through the show. Mm -hmm. Hey. Mm -hmm. I want to say hi to my mom, to my dad, to my sister, to all of my family and friends who watch. Hey, y'all. What it do? As you come in, please say hi so I can greet you. Please say hi in the comments so I can greet you. All right, we are all shared out on Facebook. Ooh, yeah, okay. Let me, hey, AP Jackson, girl. I almost missed the show. I took a nap. Thank God I have an alarm to wake me up 20 minutes before the show. Okay, no music today because I was rushing. <laughs> hey, Drudis. Hey, hey. All right. Okay. Ooh, what you mean I wasn't using it? Okay, there we go. So we are all uh, shared out everywhere. These seem very dark. Okay, there we go. All right. So tonight we have some cool stories. We have a story that is a lesson in why you need to be very specific when you are claiming copyright infringement. Uh, I have a uh, story for all of you people who like to use uh, the, the the VPNs. Story for y'all. Cautionary tale. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan, I have a story for you. And uh, if you like umami. <laughs> hey, Kel's Butter. Hey, hey. All right. So we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes um, how was your weekend guys i hope you had a lovely weekend uh did any of you guys dress up for halloween i told y'all i was having a one person halloween well not one person halloween me and my housemates you know uh we had some candy and some pizza <laughs> uh, but there was no trick-or-treating no 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 Hey, Margaret. Hey, hey, girl. All right. Ooh, all right. So we're getting started in one minute. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. My apologies. Again, y'all, if it was not for my alarm, this show would not have happened. I fell asleep, and the alarm woke me up 20 minutes before the show. So thank God that I remembered to always keep that 20 minute alarm on so that we have our time together. All right. It is 8 it is 805. So let's get ready to start. Okay, hey creating time. All right, I'm hitting the record button, all right? Record. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time hearing my voice or seeing my face, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting 
LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like making sure you have uh, your articles of incorporation with the state, getting EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure you have appropriate contracts so you don't get burned by clients and business partners, um, basic brand protection strategies, um, and how to protect your business ideas, and also um, hiring policies so you don't get sued for discrimination. If you are wondering how I'm qualified to help you do these things, I'm very happy that you asked. I'm a licensed attorney. I have one for f almost 15 years. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others. I have um, had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, there are just some concepts that you need to know. There's no way around it. So that's why we're here. All right. Um, so if you're in the startup phase of your business, or if you've been in business for a little bit and you need some help creating, a, you know, a strong legal structure, uh, hit me up, go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and let's chat at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You can book a free 15 minute consultation. If you're a first time client, uh, you can also, uh, you can also download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in 20 days. I mean, 20 days, seven days or less. I y'all, I told y'all my alarm, if it wasn't for the alarm, this wouldn't be happening <laughs> in seven days or less. Um, you can also at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, see many of my video trainings, like my let's get EIN numbers training, my dunce numbers training, my operating agreement training, my protect your biz training where I teach you about trademarks, patents, and copyrights. So there's lots of stuff over at Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Okay. So go check that out. Uh, but that is enough about me. Now let's get to the show. All right. So for those of you who might be new, uh, this is the way that the show works. I pull stories from the news stories from, uh, blog site stories that you guys send me uh and i pull the ones that have lessons that we can learn as business owners excuse me and we chat about them okay so this is the time for all of us to get involved don't feel shy uh i give me your comments and your questions as long as they are respectful hmm. your girl was just a bit parched okay all right so, uh, that is enough about that. So let's get started. Can't wait for your participation. Okay. All right. First stories first. Uh, does anybody here have Apple TV? If you have the Apple TV service, please give me an Apple emoji. If you have the Apple TV service, please give me the Apple emoji. Um, if you don't, just say no. I do not have the Apple TV service. There's there's too many streaming services out here. Um, I, I got the Disney Plus package. Uh, you don't have a creating time. I got the Disney Plus package, Netflix, and between me and my housemates, we got a good array. But I ha I haven't heard anything yet on Apple TV that makes me want to subscribe. Margaret said no. Creating time said no. Okay. That's cool. I don't know very many people that have an Apple TV subscription, uh, but you know, thank you, AP Jackson. But Apple, Apple TV, they're trying to get, they're trying to get up there. You know, they're slowly developing programming. Um, and one of the first pieces of programming that they delivered was, uh, are you really just going to stay there and, and scratch, sir, Toby? Um, and one of the first pieces of content that has been on Apple TV is a series called Servant. Um, and the premise of the show Servant is that this woman loses her child, um, you know, and she's having depression and everything. So her husband gets her a doll to kind of replace the, the child that died. And then they hire a nanny to take care of the doll. So that is the premise of Servant, okay? 
Now, here's the issue. There is uh, a producer by the name of Francesca Gregorini, and she produced something called The Truth About Emmanuel, okay? Now, uh, uh, The Truth About Emmanuel is a story about a girl who um, her her mother passes away, uh, you know, while giving birth to her. So, you know, she never gets to really know her mother. But then she ends up meeting a woman who... Uh, who looks a lot like her mother who died and she befriends her. And then the lady hires her to take care of her uh, child, which ends up being a doll as well. Okay. So it's two different stories about people being hired to take care of a doll. Um, and apparently that is where the similarities ended for the court because, uh, so th this producer, Francesca Gregorini, she sued, uh, the, the producers of The Servant, uh, meaning Blinding Edge Productions, M. Night Shyamalan, and Apple TV, she sued them for copyright infringement because she said that they, they, they infringed on her, the story about Emmanuel work, okay? And she was basically saying, look, both of our stories have dolls in it where somebody hired a nanny. How do you not see the difference? And the court said, girl, you need way more than this. Remember last week when we talked about um, Virginia Vallejo, the lady who wrote that um, book about Pablo Escobar, right? She said, well, you know, they, they took scenes like we met in a hotel and he had a relationship with a reporter, da, 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 da. But they never used any dialogue. Um, apparently, this was kind of the same case here between... Uh, Apple TV uh, and Francesca Gregorini to the court. That was where the similarities ended. Yes, both of these stories have a, a premise of a doll having a nanny being hired to take care of them. But after that, there's no more similarities in the story. So the court said, not only is there no copyright infringement here, you really reached and you wasted our time. So the court actually um, has... Uh, made a judgment against Francesca Gregorini and has awarded Apple TV, Blinding Edge Productions, and M. Night Shyamalan all of their attorney's fees. So Francesca Gregorini has to pay these entities $162,467.30 in attorney's fees because she wasted the court's time. Why did I pick this case? Because... Uh, I have said this several times. When you have intellectual property, when you are trying to trademark or copyright something or patent something, you cannot um, protect an idea. There has to be, you know, um, you can't just blanket protect an idea. So the idea of a doll having a nanny hired to take care of them is not so unique of an idea that it is something that requires copyright protection. It is a, a generic situation. Now, if you use some of the same names, some of the same dialogue, hey, some of the same places, you know, that there is a little bit more that goes into it. But just, but there are so many different ideas in the world. Think about how many books there are out there about vampires, right? Imagine someone trying to sue uh, um, you know, for copyright infringement because of a vampire story. There are hundreds of them out there and you can't really do that. So it's kind of the same thing here. While it might be a smaller genre, the idea of dolls being, you know, either coming to life or being treated as alive is not a unique situation in the horror genre. Hey, Nessie time. I got your text. I literally got like, I literally got it like five minutes before the show. I love it. Um, right. So the, um, the court said this is not a unique enough idea. Um, and you wasted our time. So you're going to run this other side, $163,000. Um, so I want to know from you guys, do you think the court got it right? Or do you, do you think that this award is excessive against Francesca Gregorini? Margaret Massey said, there's another movie like that. I don't remember the name. The nanny was to take care of the invisible baby. The mother had mental issues and couldn't deal with the loss of the baby. I agree with the judge. 
Okay, so Margaret Massey even said there's there's more stuff out there with that same premise, right? So Francesca, you don't have, you know, uh, you don't have ownership over the idea of, you know, dolls being being treated as people or, you know, and being used in the horror genre. So let the lesson that we can learn here, if you're going to sue for copyright infringement or trademark infringement, make sure that your idea is actually protectable. It can't be generic. It has to be specific. Like if you're talking about a book or a play, you're going to need dialogue. You're going to need names. You're going to need very specific elements that can only be attributed to your work. Okay. You can't just try and claim ownership over blanket generic ideas. All right. Okay. So that is, uh, that is that story. So if you, um, for those of you who might be thinking of getting Apple TV, or if you have, you know, something else to watch it, let me know what it's like, but that actually leads us into our next story. Um, does any, does anybody know what a VPN is? If you know what a VPN is, please put it in the comments. If you know what a v VPN is, please put it in the comments. Um, yes. Or somebody look it up real quick and somebody look it up real quick for me because I, I wrote it down for myself. Well, I looked it up and then I forgot to write, to write it down. So if you know what a VPN is, uh, right, tell me what a VPN is in the comments. Nobody knows what a VPN is. All right. Um, so 76 Grim Cray said, sounds familiar. So VPNs there, you're mostly going to hear from them for, for people who, you know, are outside of the country. You use it to log into your jobs network. Do you know what VPN stands for, AP Jackson? Can you put it in the comments for us? For those of you that don't know, a VPN, I uh, forget what the V stands for. I looked it up this morning, but it's like something, oh, vir, vir, it's called a virtual private network, right? So um, when a, a lot of times when this comes up, thank you, Creating Time virtual private network. So when I, a lot of times if you're going outside of the country, right, and you're trying to access certain programming, you can't because of, you know, whatever laws are going on in the country, right? But people find ways around it. And one of those things is a virtual private network. It allows you to kind of bypass any blocks and, you know, access whatever you want to on the internet, right? And people like it because it's supposed to be private. It's supposed to be kind of anonymous and, you know, you don't get in trouble. Um, now, AP Jackson, you said you use a VPN to log into your jobs network. AP Jackson said it's protection from hackers. Oh, I didn't know that it does that as well. Okay. So apparently VPNs also protect you from hackers. Um, well, VPNs are also used to, 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 uh, to, for piracy. They're used to, you know, stream things that you don't have access to or th that shouldn't be in the world. Hello, pretty poise, right? Um, and they're the, the producers of the movie Angel Has Fallen, um, are basically suing the users of a VPN network. If you thought that using a VPN network hid you, uh, you know, hid you and, you know, you can't be caught because it's a VPN and you're shielded or whatever. I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. Um, the people who produced the movie Angel Has Fallen, they uh, are suing the users of a VPN uh, service called Private Internet Access. There's about 15 people that they are going after for copyright infringement for having uh, streamed and downloaded their movie illegally, right? Now... For me, I know I would be scared of because I'd be like, I thought, you know, I, I'm using this VPN. I'm not logging in anywhere. But ladies and gentlemen, there's nowhere you can hide on the Internet. All right. Um, these the, these companies, they're getting very smart. They're getting very savvy. Um, and just because you're using a VPN, a virtual private network, that doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot be seen by people who are very good with computers. So for those of you 
who may be using VPNs to, you know, stream things that you don't necessarily have access to. I'm telling you this story as a cautionary tale. Your VPN may not be enough to protect you uh, from being found out by these companies. So if you are, you know, if you are pirating movies and things on a VPN, you might want to be a little bit careful, all right? Now, these users who have been targeted by the producers of Angel Has Fallen, they haven't been sued yet, um, but they are expecting cease and desist notices very quickly. So uh, this is just a cautionary tale to my friends out there that use VPNs. They're not, they're not completely foolproof, and you can be caught, okay? Um... Yeah, I, I haven't used a VPN myself. Uh, I may use one next time I go out of the country, depending on what I need access to. Um, but we will see what happens, okay? All right. Uh, before we move on to our next story, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where we learn business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. I am a business formation attorney that is here to help you get your business business foundation solid and legally legit, all right? If you're in the startup phase of your business and you need some legal guidance, I'm the person that wants to help you. I can help you get your articles of incorporation, get your contracts together, get your uh, your branding strategies together, get your EIN numbers and DUNS numbers and your hiring policies, all of those foundational things that people don't really like to think about. Um, you, you need those. Like if you want to open a bank account, you're going to need an operating agreement, right? And if you're asking what an operating agreement, you need to go to linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm and go check out the video training right now. Um, but yeah, so... I want to help you build a strong foundation for your startup. So go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm today and let's talk. All right. Okay. Moving on to our next story of the evening. Do we have any Star Wars fans here? If you're a Star Wars fan, um, give me an alien emoji. If you are a Star Wars fan, give me an alien emoji. Okay. Now I'm more of a Star Trek girl. <clears throat> I love like I'm yeah, I'm a Trekkie. First, I love my my first Star Trek series is The Next Generation because I love Captain Picard and then the next one is um Voyager. You're not a you're not a Star Wars fan 76 Scream K. Okay. Margaret Massey is not a is not a Star Wars fan. Um Nessie Oh, Nessie Tom, you're a Star Wars fan. Awesome. Okay. So Nessie is is a Star Wars fan. Star Wars is cool. I've actually been watching The Mandalorian. The, the first the first episode of the second season just dropped on Disney Plus. So I watched that the other day. It's a pretty good show. Um, but uh, there is a character in Star Wars named Boba Fett. Nessie, time. Can you tell us who Boba Fett is in the Star Wars series? Who is Boba Fett? Okay. Um, and while uh, Nessie Time tells us who Boba Fett is, um, one of the things that trademark applications are good for is they're really great for letting you know what a company is planning to do um, in the future. Uh, and Disney Plus, you know, they are getting all their girls in a row and coming out with, you know, tons of programming for their app. Um, and most recently, they have filed a trademark for the name Boba Fett. Um, I think Nessie Time may have stepped away for a moment. But if you don't know who Boba Fett is in the Star Wars series, series uh, that character is a, is a bounty hunter. Okay? Um, so the, the, the Star Wars team, they have filed a trademark for the name Boba Fett. Now, what does that mean? It means that probably pretty soon we will have some type of Boba Fett series or movie or some type of media that will be coming out um, within the Star Wars franchise. Now, Nessie Time seems to be the only one who is a Star Wars fan. So, Nessie, if you're back, I want to know, are you excited 
would you be would you be interested in seeing a series about Boba Fett? Um, and for those of you, even if you're not necessarily a Star Wars fan, if you have watched any of the movies or if you if you're into sci-fi at all, would you be interested in seeing a series about Boba Fett? Now, Star Wars, they have tons of spin-offs. I'm actually a really big fan of their um animated series, The Clone Wars. That just ended uh this year, I believe. But um, is anybody interested in seeing uh is some some type of series or movie about Boba Fett? Y'all do not seem excited about this Star Wars development. Where is the geek in y'all? Y'all know I'm a nerd. I need my nerds to Come hang out with me. <laughs> Nessie Time said, sorry, someone was, someone else was talking. Okay. Um, that's cool. I understand you. Uh, Nessie Time said she, what she would watch, she would be interested in the Boa Fett, uh, uh, series if it was action packed enough. Creating Time is laughing at me because I said I'm a nerd. Girl, you know I'm a nerd. I embrace that with all my heart. 76 Grimka is not interested. That's cool. Star Wars isn't for everybody. I'm not going to say I'm the biggest Star Wars fan. But, you know, they do they do cool things. And, you know, I'm going to give them their just due. Um, so, just a, just a word to the wise. If you ever want to know, you know, what's happening with your favorite companies and stuff, you can go dig around and see what trademarks they have filed. And it can give you an idea of what they're planning, okay? Thank you for that nerd emoji, great time. Yes, I love nerd life. All right. Okay. Margaret said she's not particularly interested. That's cool. I mean, I have the Disney Plus app, so I'll probably end up watching it. Um, just because I like sci-fi stuff. And The Mandalorian, you know, it keeps me intrigued. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to our last story of the evening. Um, have you guys ever heard of the word umami? If you have heard of the word umami, please give me a U in the comments. If you've heard of the word umami, U-M-A-M-I, okay? Um, if you have not heard of the word umami, umami is originally a Japanese word that means pleasant, savory taste, right? Um, it is considered like the fifth flavor because, you know, we have like sweet, salty, bitter what are the what are the four flavors they're sweet salty bitter and something i can't remember anyway but a, but you know i remember some years ago them saying well there's a fifth a fifth flavor profile called umami right now i said it's originally a japanese word um that's the time I said sour yes yeah, so there's sweet sour savory sweet sour salt it's are sour and salty the same thing i don't know so somebody help me out y'all you you science people help me out okay um anyway so umami is a flavor profile uh and the word umami itself is originally a japanese word remember um last week when we talked about hakuna matata and that being an actual swahili phrase that was trademarked by disney right um, so there is a burger chain that started in LA called Umami Burger. They have 12 locations. Um, they, uh, they have a trademark on the word Umami for, you know, for, for burger and fry restaurants. Um, and they have filed a trademark infringement suit against a burger chain located in Oklahoma that is calling itself uh, umami fries. Okay. Now umami burger, like I said, they started in Los Angeles. They have 12 locations. They have no locations in Oklahoma, though they have been written about in certain Oklahoma, um, publications. Okay. AP Jackson gave me the flavors. It's sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. Okay. Thank you, girl. Whoo. You saved my life. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. I love good. Googleisha is your best friend. Never be afraid to Google, y'all. Google is there for us 24-7, 365. She loves it when you ask her questions. Um, thank you for that, AP Jackson. All right. So 
Umami Burger in LA, they, they're like, look, this little chain, Umami Fries, they have two locations, one in Tulsa and one in Mi Minneapolis. They are suing Umami Fries for trademark infringement. They said, look, there's only room for one burger joint that sells, uh, th that goes by the name Umami. They're like, you know, uh, you know, they're like, look, we're not in Oklahoma yet, but y'all know about us because somebody wrote about us. And we don't appreciate you guys having, you know, a, a restaurant that is named basically after our restaurant. So I want to know from you guys, do you think that Umami Burger is doing too much against Umami Fries? Umami Burger, they do have a federal trademark for the word Umami when it comes to, you know, restaurants, uh, you know, fast casual uh, burger burger restaurants, you know, or fast food. Uh, umami Fries does not have a trademark, right? But do you think that there is a possibility of confusion between umami burger and umami fries, right? Now they don't have any places where their where their locations collide yet, but let's say you know they expand and there is a city or a state where there happens to be an umami burger and umami fries at the same time. Do you think that there is a possibility of confusion between the two chains? What do you think? So I'm asking you, is Umami Burger, are they doing the right thing by suing for trademark infringement against this Oklahoma burger chain? Umami Burger versus Umami Fries. Um, Margaret Massey said, yes, confusion. Right. For me, I would think, well, maybe this is just kind of like an offshoot of, you know, their burger. Maybe it's like a, a fries bar. Maybe Umami Burger is a burger bar, right? Now, it, it, it's kind of, I think that Umami Burger, they're getting ahead of it uh, by, you know, taking care of it now instead of, you know, when they're in two different locations. But the fact that there is an awareness of Umami Burger in Oklahoma as, and that they've been written up about is, you know, that that is, I think, that's a credible, that's credible proof that there could be confusion. Um, 76 Grim Case said, yes, burgers and fries go together. Absolutely. When you think burgers, you think fries. So I think we're all on the side of Umami Burger in this case. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, Umami Fries, you're doing too much. Margaret Massey said, yes, they should sue for infringement. I totally agree. You know, Umami Burger, they're getting out there. They've got 12 locations and they're growing. And then Umami Fries just pops up with your two little locations uh, and, you're, and you're doing the same kind of food, you know? It's not even like it's Japanese fusion, whatever. It's like it's literally burgers and fries. There's nothing novel. There's nothing different. Nessie Time agrees as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, so good luck to Umami Burger. I, I do think they're that they are in the right in this case and that Umami Fries needs to change their name. Okay. Um, all right. So those were the stories that I had for you tonight. Y'all, I have something coming in the mail. Um, I told you guys that I, um, if, well, yeah, I told you guys that I was looking for a graphic designer, and I finally found one in y'all, um, Nessie Time. She's on here right now. She helped me create a logo for the show. Y'all know that I had, you know, stuff that I was having you vote on, and we finally came up with the final design, and she's sending me prototype shirts and things. Uh, I told you guys that I wanted to get merch out for the show, and it's finally happening. Um, working with Nessie was such... A great time so if you guys are looking for a graphic designer I just wanted to take a moment out to say please go check out rise of dark dawn um, and go check out Nessie time on Instagram because uh, I'm just so pleased by what is coming out I can't wait to show y'all the shirts that we're coming with we're gonna be have we're gonna have mugs y'all we are going to be a real tribe I cannot wait um, so look out for that um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of this, um, and it's my first foray into, you know, merch, so be kind. Uh, but yeah, this is where I'm going to leave you tonight. Um, we will be back tomorrow with more stories. Uh, please take care of yourselves. Oh, you're so welcome, Nessie. Like, thank you so much for being amazing. Um, but yeah, have a great night, guys. Take care of yourselves. 
come join me here at 8 o'clock. If you find any stories, please don't hesitate to send them to me. You know I love it when you send me stories. Um, and make sure you go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm and hook up with your girl if you need some business guidance, all right? Have a good night. Bye.